See, if I get up behind that, I'll go another different direction. We're going to be in the Sunday school mode for the next two or three weeks. So I got to let this thing simmer. Stacey, it's just a little too hot. Uh, I, I told you, I told you uh, when we had our soul food Sunday, and one of the sisters bought some mustard greens. And, and uh, you know, your preacher greedy. I could just smell them. I said, sis, sis, give me some of them greens. Give me, give me some of them greens. She said, well, Brother Glenn, wait till the dinner. I said, give me some of them greens. You talk about you could. So she said, okay, but they hot. They hot. Now, don't miss this. She said, they hot. Yeah. She put them in a bowl, and I got my little fork, and I didn't listen to the command that it was hot. So I went down, yeah. came up, yeah. put them in my mouth, and they were hot. Yeah. I had to let them go, y'all. <laughs> That boy got this thing so hot right now, I have to just let it go. I'm going to let this thing settle down because we have been, a few weeks ago, Brother Melton stood before you and said that we were uh, in a, uh, uh, a very serious period here at our church. He told us that, he told you guys rather, that we were about to ordain some deacons. Now I want to tell you something, church. I... God's doing something with me, Ephraim, like never, ever before. I confessed, I confessed and told the church four or five years ago, or, or, or three years ago, it was important to me to, for you to think that I was a good preacher. I wanted you to say, Brother Glenn's a good preacher, Ben. I, I, I want and, 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 and anybody who does anything in a profession, if they don't want to be good in it, something's wrong with them. Something's wrong, man. I mean, you want to be good at whatever you do, but let me tell you something. I'm not interested in you thinking I'm a good preacher or not. I'm interested in teaching and learning this church because I believe with all of my heart that strong teaching constitutes a strong church. And I have to tell you that many for many, many years that we've been, we've been, we've been, robbing the text and we've been allowing things to be taught that's not consistent with the word of God and, and God Sonny is, is reviving me I've deleted my hard drive with all the previous information that I had and I'm uploading it with what I go in the text and get out are you praying with me so what we're going to talk about today is going to be a little different from the deacons that we normally teach but we want the Bible to speak. And we want the Bible to be, be our answer. I'm trying to let this thing cool down, Frank, because I want to teach. I don't, I, I'm not preaching to you. Give me a couple of weeks and I'll try to shout you. But today I want, I want you to learn here. And I want you to know about Acts chapter 6 like you never knew it before. So will, will you meet me at the 6th chapter of the and let me give you a disclaimer because there's going to be some rough roads in this lesson. Let me tell you who it, who, who it has dealt with the most. It has dealt with me, Virginia, and I owe this church an apology. Because for many years I merely parrot what I've heard. But Felicia, I went back and... and, 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 and and I got something out of this text that I never saw before. All right. And if you're, not, if you're not careful before I even give it to you, you'll say that's not, that's not what it says. But all I ask you to do is stay on the bus. Yes. Just stay on the bus. Just stay on the bus. Are you there? Yes, sir. Acts chapter 6. Will you stand for the reading of the word of God? I had Coleman of the dig out a scripture for me and I was finna blast that scripture. I said, uh-uh, because I would get off my lesson. I'd be talking about it how good Jesus is. Today we're not talking about the goodness of God. We're talking about deacons. The Bible says in Acts chapter 6 verse number 1, and in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring 
of the Grecians against the Hebrews because the widows were neglected in their daily administration. Th then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples together and said, it's not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, wherefore, brethren, wherefore, brethren, look ye among you seven men of honest report. Men, seven men, didn't say seven women. The text said, find seven men. Are you there? Do you see that? He said, now you get you seven men, but don't just get any man. He said, you make sure he have an honest report that he's full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom you may appoint over this business. Gracious God Almighty, speak to us today. Lord, I pray now that you would Bring back to my mind all of the things that you'd like for me to feed your children. Father, help me to just extrapolate all the truths from this text that we'll leave here better people. We'll leave here Bible people. Not just people of what we heard. So use me, Father, as you ever used before. And I'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to tag this text. It's a little warm. I wonder if that thing kicked off, man. It's a little warm in here. I want to tag this text, the reason for deacons. The reason for deacons. Beloved, before we ever ordain deacons, we need to know the biblical reason for deacons. We need to know what the Bible says about a deacon. And let me tell you, it's much different from what we've been teaching for many years. I want you to see with clarity. And, and, and let me tell you, if you don't want to email me, if you got any questions about anything that I teach, you're not going to get this at every church. They're going to tell you whatever the preacher say, that's what you better believe. But if, I, if you find one thing in this text that's not consistent with the word of God, I want you to call it to my attention. And I love God enough that if I'm wrong, now, but if you're wrong, I hope you love God enough to make the very same. This is a very serious time in our church. Your elders has been praying on this. This is not nothing very easy to do. We know things now that we didn't know at first. We, uh, we see things much clearer now than we, we did in the past. Uh, uh, so we want, I want to bring you up to snuff where we are on this because, because in making preparations for deacons, we want you to know what you should look for in a deacon. Yeah. All right, watch this. Because that's much confusion and misunderstanding about the role of a deacon. I hope I can clear it up today. I hope I can, I am not interested in the traditions of men or the teachings of men. I believe that the final authority of all matters and practice in the Bible lies within the word of God. Therefore, we are not going to concern ourselves with what man has to say about deacons. We're going to only concern ourselves with what the word of God says. Now, the passage read in your hearing does not use the word deacon. Does not use the word, but I want you to hold that because on the other side, Ephraim, I'd like to clear that up for you uh, in our English translation. But this is the first reference referring to the role of a deacon. Beloved, this passage has some insight that the early church did that I think would be, would be, would be advantageous to us if we would merely listen to what they have to say. Let's dig into this text. Look at verse 1. Can you put it on the screen for me? Acts chapter 6 and the verses number 1. The Bible says, And in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring, watch this, there arose a murmuring of the Grecian against the Hebrews because the widows of the, of, were neglected in the daily administration. Now watch this because the text unfolds in the life of the early church when a problem was brewing. Isn't it strange that even the church and its beginning had problems? 
here, here, Ben, we see that there are some people in the church that are murmuring. But what I like about the first century church, when a problem came up, they dealt with it. They didn't turn their head like it did not exist. They did not sweep it under the rug like they did not know what was going on. They did not have respect to person. In other words, just because you and I are okay, if that is a problem with you, my friendship should not have nothing to do with what you and I do to get the problem straight. Oh, you know I'm telling the truth. This is my boy. And that's some things that we we'll allow somebody else's boy. I wouldn't allow somebody else's boy to do, but I'll let mine. Let me tell you something. Leadership requires men who are straight across the board. If, if it goes for my wife, it goes for your wife. If I, if, are you hearing what I'm saying? If it goes for my children, it goes for, In other words, we can't bend the rules simply because who the person might be. Are you praying with me? So watch this now. When a problem came up in the first century church, they dealt with it. They allowed the Holy Spirit hoopah, to, to, to ring in their hearts and they were led by the Spirit. Do you not know there's not one problem in the Bible that the Holy Spirit has not addressed? Yeah. Stephanie, that's not a problem in the book. That the, okay, so now when we allow the Spirit to speak clarity to us, then we can deal with our problems. Now watch this now, watch this beloved, because I want you to see the problem of multiplication. That was a problem of multiplication. The spirit had stopped adding to the church because in Acts 2, 47, the Bible said that they added, but now God has begun to multiply. You gotta get this now. If you miss this, you're gonna miss the whole thing, Jamie. Uh, uh, the, the, the church began to multiply. In Acts chapter two, 3,000 souls obeyed the gospel. In Acts chapter three, that was an unknown amount. Look at chapter three, verse 19. The Bible says, repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sins might be blotted out. So we see the church is increasing in Acts chapter 4, verse number 4. The Bible says what? How be it? Many of them. Many of them. Which heard the word believe. Which heard the word, they did what? Believe. They believe. And the number of the men was the, about five. Notice five. who they counted, Stacy. They counted the men. They say when they heard, they believed. And the number of men that they counted was over five. Thousand men. Watch how God is multiplying the church. In Acts chapter 2, that's 3,000. Acts chapter 3, that's an unknown amount. Acts chapter 4, that's 5,000. Acts chapter 5, that's another unknown amount. Look at verse number 14. The Bible says in verse number 14, and the believers were more added to the Lord, multiplied both men and women. You got to get this, y'all. If you miss this, you're going to miss the text. The church now that started off with 3,000 has grown far over 10,000 people. Yes, sir. 10,000 people. So now watch this. Watch this. The Bible tells us that there came a problem. It was the problem of murmuring. Mm. There were two classes of people in the church. There was a class that was called the Hellenistic Jews. Come here, come here, come here. I need your help. Come here, come here. She gonna represent the Hellenistic Jews. And then that was the original <laughs> Jewish women. Jewish women. I need, a, I, need a, I need a sister here to come sit here. I need a sister to come here and sit here. You gotta see this, y'all. Here was the problem. We got two classes of women in the church. Now the Hellenistic Jews, these were actually Jews, but they did not just stay in Jerusalem. They went and they started practicing the Greek culture. The Greek culture. In other words, because of where they went, they started picking up some of their habits. Now she did not wash, she had washing ceremonies. She would not wash her hands unless she would 
put them down and then allow the water to one way. That's the way the Jews did. But the Hellenistic Jews didn't care about the washing of the water. She would not touch a Gentile because she thought she would get infected with devils. But the Hellenistic Jews did not care about that. She had the ultimate respect for her husband. The Hellenistic Jews were some, some kind of women. What I'm trying to tell you, they were both Jews. They were both Jews, but this Jew had better, this Jew this Jew had a better culture than that Jew. So now the church is growing and she is began to grumble against her. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Stay on the bus. Just stay on the bus. Stay on the bus. Stay on the bus because I want you to see this. The Bible says that they mumbled. That word refers to they had a secret debate. In other words, when she got with her Jews, do you know them girls over there? You just yeah, kind of, you got that thing. And they just talked about those that were on that side. Now watch this. It was secretly. And, and, and this thing had just grown out of proportion. See, get this. Satan had already attacked, tried to attack the church from the outside. You remember there? You remember there in Acts chapter 3. There was a man who had been lame from his mother's womb. And you remember the apostle Peter and, and John raised the man up and they began to walk in the city with this man that everybody knew had been crippled from his birth. Now watch this, because of their now walking with the man, people began to follow. He began to preach the resurrection from the dead and folk began to flock to Jesus. I mean, they were just following and following and following him. And the Sanhedrin said, we cannot allow this to go. Lock them boys up. So they threw him in prison. And they told him, we're going to let you make pardon. We're going to give you parole. But in your parole, you can't say nothing about Jesus. He says, now, whether it's right in your sight or not, we cannot but preach what we've seen. He says, you know this man was lame from his mother's womb yeah. and now he stands here with us. So that didn't work. Satan tried to attack him with pressure. That didn't work. So in chapter 5, you remember that was a man by the name of Ananias? He had a wife by the name of Sophia. They were supposed to sell their possessions and lay the money at the feet of the apostles. You remember, oh, Ananias and his wife got together and she must have told him, baby, don't you be no fool. Don't you go take all your money to that church. And the Bible says that he held back some of the price of it. And the Peter began to interrogate him. He said, Ananias, did you sell the land? And did you sell it for so much? He said, yeah, 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 I sold it. He said, did you sell it for so much? Yeah, I did. He said, why have Satan filled your heart to lie? He said, you have not lied to man, but you lied to God. And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost came down and And it says about three hours later, that his wife came in and told the same lie. I believe that the pallbearers that had took Ananias out had made it back to the house and now was ready to take her. But then the Bible says it was about three hours. That kind of bothered me because normally when mama goes to the mall, it takes about, I better leave that thing alone. I better leave that thing alone. I don't know, the Bible didn't say she went to the mall, but I sure believe that. But whatever she went, she came back and she told the same lie. So now Satan tried, get this, he tried to attack the church with persecution. And then he tried to attack the church with sin. And both of those methods fail. So Satan said, here's what I'm going to do. I couldn't divide it from the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on the inside and divide the church. So he gets this system to start talking about, come on, y'all, I'm on that thing. Y'all just got to walk with me right here. He gets this sister to start talking about that sister, and it calls a problem. Can, can, can I tell you something? Isn't it interesting to see that the first recorded uh, uh, a problem in the Bible came up with two sisters. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you? Don't mean no harm. Don't mean no harm. It's still affecting the church 
today. Beloved, we got to get on top of this murmuring. It's too much murmuring in the church. Amen. Be a man. If you got something to tell the preacher, walk up to him and talk to him like a man. Amen. All of these parking lot meetings and hitting people, but brother, between you and I, I just don't like this. Man, that ain't what the Bible said. The Bible said if you got an ought against your brother, you go to him. But we got meeting, phone ministry meetings. People just can't wait to get out of church. Girl, did you see this? Uh, 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 you know, and it's just tied up the church. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, verse number 25, that a house divided against itself shall not stand. Get from it, Philippians chapter 3, and hold verse number 17. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 17. Because, beloved, it's tarry. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Let's do that one. The Bible says in Philippians 1, 27, what? Read. Only let your conversation he said, be. Only as let your conversation be. As it becometh the gospel. As it become the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you. Paul said, whether I come to see you or else be, or absent, else be absent. I may be here. I might be hearing of your fast. That you stand fast. That we're standing fast with one another. Read. With one mind. Yeah. Striving together. Doing what? Striving together. How can we strive together and you pulling this way and I'm pulling that way? How can we strive together? First Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 10. He said, now I beseech ye brethren by the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that you all might speak the same thing. That you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Paul said, it has been untold unto me of you of the house of Chloe that there is some division among you. He said, y'all going around. Some say that I am of Apollos. Some say that I'm of Cephas. Some say that, and he said, wait a minute, I got a question. Was, was Paul crucified for you? No. He said, well, what? beloved, murmuring will tear up the church. Come here, look this way. And you need leaders that went, okay, the Bible says, the Bible says, mark them. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse number 20, 20, 17 and, and Romans chapter 16 and verse number 17. The Bible say mark them that cause division contrary to the doctrine. You ever heard that, 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 that saying when they got out of the army, he's got an X on his back? That's where it comes from. They used to mark them, man. You couldn't go from one place, start and mess and go to another place, start because you had a mark. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, read. Verse 17, I believe it is. Brethren, be followers together. He said, brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them. Why don't we start marking some of these devils? Why don't we mark them? The Bible says, same Bible say, women don't have to, need to be preaching. Say, mark some of these devils. I bet you you'll cut some of this mess out. Mark them. Mark them. Hmm. Yeah, and then you ought not just be no recipient of garbage when they come to you with this garbage. Let me tell you, girl, did you know, do you know what Brother Glenn did? Look, if you don't want to tell him, I don't want to know. Oh, we gonna, y'all, y'all don't mess with me today. We're gonna have some trouble up in here today. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Beloved, what I'm trying to tell you is that when we start, okay, let me move on. Don't want to beat that thing too long. I want you to see something. So that was some murmuring in the church. Say they were murmuring, and we're still murmuring today. Yeah. Beloved, I want you to see something. Uh, 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 the first recorded incident of, 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 of the spreading of the church, the church problem wasn't the gospel. The gospel was powerful. It wasn't finances. They had sold their possession. Beloved, it wasn't membership. They had a whole lot of people. The first problem in the church was murmuring. And I better, I told a, a 7.30 cry, murmurers are professionals. It's the same ones. They professional murmurers. They got degrees with it. They know how. They know how to murmur. Good. They like ventriloquists. 
How you say it? Just yeah! Beloved, I'm telling you, if we don't do something, okay, okay, let's go deeper. Y'all ready for this? Watch this. Woo! Well, I was going to show you, I, I, but I, for time's sake, I'm going to leave it. I was going to take you to Numbers 14. If you're, note, if you're a note taker, if I was, we were going to go to Numbers 14. Okay. Uh, I was going to show you what God did for him, mummering back there. And I know how some of us, I need some New Testament. I was going to show you what happened in Matthew chapter 20 when they were mummering about when Jesus hired some late and some early. They were mummering about that. I was going to show you in Luke chapter 15 how they were mummering about that. They were mummering because Jesus was eating with sinners and republic, with, with, with publicans. And they were mummering about that. In John chapter 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. They were mummering about that. That. And, the, and, and, and in each case, we see mummering. Can I tell you what's behind it? Is because somebody didn't get their way. Mm. Watch, this. watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. But then, that was a problem with ministry. You got to see this. See, the Greek speaking with us thought that they were not getting a share of food. The early church was committed to taking care of the people. Oh, I know what you're saying now. Why don't we do it now? Let me tell you why. Because the early church, people sold their land and their houses and they bought the money down to the church. We want the church to take care, but you don't want to sell your house and your land. You don't even want to give. Watch this. And then those, those, those elite members, those affluent people. If you're looking for this in Acts chapter 2, verse 44, I better read that. Y'all looking funny. Acts chapter 2, verse 44. The Bible says what? And all that believed were together. All that believed were together. And had all things. Had common. all things in common. And sold their possessions. They did good. what? Sold. They did what? Sold. Sold whatever they had. And did what with it? And parted them to all men. And they parted them to and all every men. Every man had need. Now, now, now watch this. The, the affluent members, those who really had a lot of stuff over in, in Acts chapter uh, 4, verse number 34. Barnabas, they had land. But I, I just want to show you. So the, it was the responsibility. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get there. Jamel, it was the responsibility of the apostles mm -hmm. to make sure that these widows was taken care of. It was, it was the apostle's responsibility, you know, and not, not keep in mind, this one is complaining because she's getting more. Now, keep, watch this, y'all. I'm going somewhere. Y'all can't get off the bus now. Now, watch this, watch this. And now, as the church grew, that task became harder and harder. Yeah. See, the Greek-speaking widows of the church apparently felt like they were being deliberately overlooked, and they spoke up about it. Now you gotta see this man. So now you gotta find a man. You gotta find a man that's strong enough, that's strong enough to look over here at this widow and says, look, we finna get this straightened out. And then he's got to look at this widow and says, you have to stop all of that complaint. In other words, he's got to have enough backbone Oh, he got to have enough backbone to face But then he has to have enough tact to do it properly. Are you hearing what? He has to know how to talk to this one. See, some of us got backbone, but we don't have no tact. We got bad attitudes. We got bad attitudes. How you gonna run in my wife face hollering at her and you won't say nothing to yours? Watch this. You got to have enough, you got to be enough man to be able to, when you don't get your way, oh, can we go deeper? Y'all, yeah, okay. Watch this. Don't you move. Don't y'all move. Don't you move. You got to see this. You got to see this. You got to see this. You got to see this thing, man. So watch this. Verse 2. Then the 12 called the multitude of the disciples together. And he said, it's not reason that we should leave the word of God to serve tables. 
get this now, their job was to make sure they had their food. The church is grown now. And, and, and instead of trying to, to, well, hold on, hold on, huh, baby, oh, wait a minute, let me get you your groceries. Let's fix this. Let me get you your groceries. You're going to see this. There's your groceries. No, 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 no. You got to see it. 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 Hold on a minute. Watch this. Now, I, I'm teaching the word of God. And, and, and she's complaining because she had more. So hold on a minute. Hold on, hold on, sis. Huh, take these here. Huh, take these here. See, I, I want you to know that Jesus, hold on, sis. I'm teaching the word. So it got overwhelming. Because they're trying to teach. She's complaining. She's over there happy. Watch this, y'all. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Please get it. The apostle said, it's not reason that I leave the gospel to serve these tables. Can I tell you something about priority? Preaching is much more than you'll ever know. In chapter four, in verse four of the text, he talked about preaching and praying. Lord, help me explain this like they need to hear. See, there's two things. The apostles recognized that their primary responsibility was to preach the word of God. That involves two things. It involves prayer and it involves preparation. Beloved, let me tell you, he said, but we can't give ourselves. We got to give ourselves, verse four, constantly to praying. And to the word of God. See, if these men kept doing this, kept doing this, they could never be able, huh, baby, take that. They could never be able to get their message together. Are y'all following me? You got to see this thing, man. It's going to unfold for you. It's going to, see, see, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you something that, 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 that probably... You don't have no idea. It's not that the apostles were above the routine of serving the food, but their priority was to preach the gospel. Man, whether you know it or not, whether you know it or not, it takes me anywhere from 10 to 12 hours to prepare a 30 to 40 minute sermon. Right. This don't happen. You get uh, preachers like Irwin, they make it look easy, but it's a lot. Can I tell you what? When I knew I was going to preach Acts chapter 6, I looked up every word from verses 1 through verse 7. That's the first thing I do. That's the first thing. I have to go back and look up every word. Every word. And then secondly, I have to find out the contents of the text. What was happening to make him say that? And then I have to make it relevant that you and I would be, in other words, I have to bridge the text from there to here in order to get you, oh, I could go and find some junk on the internet or, uh, 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 but, but you know what? I don't feed y'all garbage. I don't feed you garbage. I work, let me tell you this. This man called me, hey, man, what you doing? Read, Crystal said, Big Daddy, do you do anything but study? Because it takes, you don't get this. You know what? You don't just get this by osmosis. You just can't. It don't come like that. It don't come. You got to burn some midnight. Now, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul got it by revelation. I get it by perspiration. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Beloved, I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something. See, they, they, they understood. They understood how hard it was to, to put a... See, most people think that, that when you're called to preach, and let me fix that, because we don't believe that. 
But I want to help you understand something. Let me, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter, whatever it says, it says, whoso findeth a good wife, findeth a good thing. Listen to the word in the best stage. How are you going to find a wife? If she's a wife, she's already. If she's a wife, she's already married. So how are you going to find a wife? Because if, she, if she's a wife, she's married. You want me to tell you what, what, what it means, what the text means? It means that she is conducting herself as a wife even before she get a husband. She's cooking, she's cleaning, she's taking care. She's already conducting herself. She's a wife when you meet her. The only thing you do is just enhance her wife's ability. But she's already a wife. Just like a man is already a preacher. Not going to school or help him. Uh, uh, that, uh, but it's already, man, you, anybody just can't get up here. You, you, you just can't get up here. This just ain't nothing for anybody to do. Man, this got to be something. This got to be a call. You can wake me up at 12 at night. Give me a microphone and a rag, and I'm telling you, I'm out of here. I'm gone. Because this is my life. Are you understanding me? And most people think that you just going to get a sermon. Don't work like that. Most people think that because you can talk good. If I can get up here and say a few, now I, I admit that there are some preachers, that's all they do. Da, 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 and say 40 minutes or nothing. But if you're going to strengthen somebody, if you're going to enhance or change a life, I got one of the best blessings I ever had. I was, bro called me, he said, Glenn, you don't remember. He said, right. six years ago, my wife and I came to your office we were on our way to get a divorce. And you told me, you said, man, be sure that you've done everything you could if this marriage don't work. Mm -hmm. I said, so can you look me in my eyes and tell me you put everything into this marriage? Mm -hmm. Well, I said, no, 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 ain't what I asked you. Mm -hmm. I said, have you went above and beyond? Yeah, yeah. He said, well, I said, that ain't what I asked you. And I said, lady, have you been above and beyond? For this man, but I'm sick of her. I said, but that ain't what. I said, I'll tell you what you do. I said, y'all take one more month. You got three kids. Take one more month and go beyond uh, uh, the call of duty. Take yourself out and just take her faults out and just work on yours. And you take his out. And do you know he came? He says, you know, we never did come back to your office. I said, you know what? I do kind of remember that. He said, man, my marriage has been going and going. God has just been blessing my marriage. Let me tell you something. And, 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 and let me tell you something. That just flutters my soul, man. Because this is what this is all about. Oh, you, okay, okay, watch this, man. Woo, I got to get to the text. I ain't even made it to the text yet. Beloved, some of us think just because we talk good. But I'm going to tell you something. We have diminished the preacher in the church of Christ. Uh -huh. I know you ain't going to say amen right here, but I'm finna show you. I'm finna show you because let me tell you something. The preacher is important. Yeah. And we didn't want to look like everybody else, so we just said he's just another man. He's not just another man. As a matter of fact, the preacher is more important than the elders. Let me tell you something. Out of 27 books in the New Testament, Three of them are wrote to preachers. Not one is wrote to an elder. The elder's job is to oversee y'all. The preacher's job is to teach and to feed the ministry of this church. And let me tell you something. I got to stand before God before this. Boy, and I told him this morning at 7.30, there's seven charges that God gave the preacher right there in the book of Timothy. When we finish with these deacons, I'm going to preach them to you. Seven charges that he got. One of the charges, okay, don't look like that, y'all. I'm trying to get to the sun. Get from it, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 3. Let me just show him something. Watch this. Read 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Come on, read it. Uh, yes, and I besought, and I besought thee uh -huh. to abide still in effort. Read. When I went into Macedonia, read. that thou mightest char char charge. Thou mightest do what? Charge. He's talking to the preacher. 
He says, preacher, that I might charge them that they do what? Son, that they teach no other doctrine. He said, preacher, it's your charge to make sure no other doctrine be taught up in here. Up in here. Let me tell you something. When I stand before God and there's some other doctrine being taught, I got to give an account. Not Robert. Robert's got to give an account of you and you and you and you. Okay, y'all looking funny, man. Come on, man. Titus chapter 1, verse number number 5. Hold on, hold on, sister. I ain't forgot about y'all. Just stay right there. Just stay right there. I, I, I'm going to get you some. I'm going to get you some. Just wait. In, in, in Titus chapter 1 and verse number 5, the Bible says, well, he said, for this cause I left thee in Crete that thou might sit at things in order. He said, preacher, you set things in order. Mm. What things you ought to sit in order? The Lord, things that are warning. Right. What things that were warning? Drop down to verse 10. It'll tell you, read. Come on. For there are many unruly. He said there were some unruly. And vain talkers. And vain talkers. And deceivers. And deceivers. Especially they of the circumcision. Especially they of the circumcision. Who's he said, set them in order. Read. Whose mouths must be stopped. He got to stop their mouth. So a preacher has to have some backbone. He see this going on and he afraid to say something. That's Brother Glenn's job. Make sure no other doctrine goes on. Read, come on, let me show you what else was going on. Who subvert whole houses. They tear up houses. Teaching things. Teaching things. Ought not. Read. For filthy lucre's sake. For, for money's sake, read. One of them, one of themselves. Uh -huh. Even a prophet of their own said. Eat, read. The, the Christians are always liars. He said the Christians are nothing but liars, man. Evil beasts. Evil beasts. Slow bed. Slow, read. This witness is true. Read. Wherefore, rebuke them sharp. You rebuke them. Can't be, you can't be afraid to rebuke him. Now watch this. He go on to tell him about the deacon. He go on to tell him about the elder. But look at chapter 2, verse 15. Look what he tells the preacher. He told this to the preacher, chapter 2, verse 15. The Bible. These things speak. He said, these things you speak. And exalt. And you exalt. And rebuke. And with rebuke. all authority that no man despise thee. Now that's in the text. That's in the text. He said, these things you do, you, you do it with all authority. Now, the preacher has, cannot go out of his God-given authority. Now, when he stopped following God, then you stop following him. Yeah, yeah ain't no Jim Jones. Ain't nobody crazy, man. Yeah. You ain't going to get me to do all this kind of stuff. Whenever yes, sir. his eyes get off of God, then you take your, and I told him this morning, if the preacher's not doing right, get rid of him. Get rid of him. That ain't why they try to get rid of him. They get rid of him when, they, when he start mashing down. I told, her, I told a young lady, I said, it's going to be hard for you to stay at this church, baby. You can't stay here shacking up. Let's go, go. You're going to pow, 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 pow. Hey. Right? You, you ain't going to stay under my teaching just living in the county. And I know about it. Man, I, you know what? I'm telling you, I, I got kids. I got kids. And just what they get, just what you get. They get just what you get. They ain't, they, they ain't doing what I, I like them to do. Yours ain't either. But I don't cut them no slack. Daddy tell them. Whew, let me get back to the lesson. Man, I told you to let me. See, I know where I get way off. Watch this now. Watch these with us. You got to watch them now. You got to watch them. You got to watch them. You got to see this. You got to see this. You got to see this. Now, that, now, now look at the priority of the, of the widows. See, sermons are important. Can I tell you something else? Let me just tell you this. Without strong preaching, you'll never, singing is good, but singing will never make a strong church. Well, it's good for the soul, but you can't sing a strong church. David said that the word was medicine and to my bone. And let me tell you, folk don't want preaching. They don't want the word. I mean, in a few minutes, everybody's going to be looking back. Oh, it's almost 12. But he can sing songs till 2 this evening. Oh, but when it comes down to that word, we don't want that. My attention span is not but 25 minutes. It's longer than that when you was watching George Zimmerman's trial.
You watch that for 16 days. How you know? I was watching it too. <laughs> Let me tell you something. 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 I want you to know something. So watch this. Because sermons are important, but people's needs are important too. Sermons has to be prayed and prayer and, and, and preparation has to be met, but, but needs has to be met. This is a widow in the church. Her need has to be met too. And it's just as important. The problem was the apostles was trying to do this, 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 and it was just overwhelming. Yeah, Beloved, this sermon tore my tail up. I ain't got no business on the roof fixing lights. I need to be preparing hey. my sermon. I need to be praying and, and, and preparing my sermon. I, you know, and, and I'm cutting grass. And, and, you know, and I do it because I owe so much to God. God has delivered me, has moved me. And, and, and man, time, I need to be making preparation. I'm around here doing everything. Painting and there, nothing's wrong with that. But we got me in here. It's sad. It's sad. But normally, after preaching, I'll go stand at that back door. I'll shake hands. Mm. Tell it. Nah, I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. No. Watch this, watch this. Tell it. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So the Bible says in verse 3 of the text, he said, wherefore, brethren, look out among you. Seven men, get this now, honest men with honest report. He say, now, she's got a need. She's got a need, and you need to be preparing yourself. He says, brethren, look out among you. Mm -hmm. Seven men, seven men. He said, you're going to find yourself some men. He says, now, here's what you do. You put these men. And, 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 and how many we got there? Okay. He said, okay, okay. Come on, man. Come on. See that? He want to be at McDonald's. He don't want to come up here. <laughs> he said, now, he says, now, instead of you trying to make care, take, make sure her needs are taken care of, he says, you send these guys over to do it. You send these guys. Now, let me tell you something about these guys, though. These guys have to be they just can't be any men. Let me tell you something. How can they be good deacons and they got a need and these men ain't nowhere to be found? That's what I'm talking about. Huh. She's got needs. She's got needs. And, and he said, where he go? He said, just, just go help somebody. <laughs> he said, now, now watch this. These folk have needs. And you got leadership, and there ain't nowhere to be found. Yeah. Beloved, let me tell you something. They have to understand. See, see, this this job is not for everybody. Man, if you're gonna if if if, if, if you're in school or, or something like that and, and it's gonna take up your time, you know, I can't be a deacon, brother. I, I got I got to do this. I got because this has to come before anything. You got, you can't, you, you can't, it, it don't bother you to get a call at two or three in the morning. If it bothers you, then they don't, you don't have to be a deacon to go to heaven. You don't have to be no a leader to go to heaven. You know, so if it's not for you, don't do it. This, this job, this, these needs are too important. Mm. You got somebody over here, you got, you got, you got, you got somebody over here need this. You got somebody that need this, and you're looking for your leadership. Do you know what the word leadership is? It means to lead the ship. How can you lead the ship, and the ship is gone, and you're not even on it? Hey. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. So he said, now, look out! Seven men. I need to help you see something right here. I need to help you see something. You see the phrase, let's, let's, let's just tell this up. I got a few minutes. You see the phrase, over this business in verse 3? This has been taken out of context. 
Let me tell you what that don't mean. It don't mean when you get deacons that they take the business of the church. They took the business that was given to them by the apostles. The only authority that the deacons had was the authority that the apostles had given them. And the only authority that the apostles had was the only authority that God had given them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Man, we put people, we make people deacons and elders because they my friend. Because they give a lot of money. Because they've been in the church a long time. I don't care if you've been in here since Moses stayed in the wilderness. If you don't qualify, you don't qualify. And we need, we need leadership to set up men. And let me tell you something. I said this, and I got, I got a ton of amen. If I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do as the preacher here, then get rid of me. But guess what happened if a deacon is not doing what he's supposed to do? He ought to have enough God-given love to say, look, this is too much for me. I got, I got kids, and, and you know, I, I need to do this, so, you know, I, I, I need to if you take in a position because of the uh, because to have a title then you don't qualify to be a deacon let me tell you this let me tell you this let me tell you this. let me tell you something let me tell you something every, every daddy in here how many daddies in here Okay, every daddy in this, in this church would love for their child to do something in the church. Yeah. Especially if you connect it to the church. If you want your church, you know, boy, it would make me, it would make me just happy. All I do is this boy say, Dad, I want to preach. <laughs> oh, I would, but he said, you forget it. <laughs> he said, I done saw the way they treat you. You think I'm going through that foolishness? <laughs> but boy, it would do me all the good in the world for that boy to preach. But let me tell you something. If he don't qualify, don't mean I need to try to move him through the ranks to get him where I want him to be. He has to be there because that's where God. I'm telling you, we get, we get close to people. You my friend, and, and you know what? I, I got, there's some good, there's some good guys here. I got some guys, these, these, these guys, and I have to say this, man, and I, I, I didn't really realize it until I went around and saw other churches and saw, man, it's, it's some, our leadership care about me. They, they treat me right. They treat me good. They treat me good. And I didn't, I didn't understand how, how important it was until I saw how some of the other preachers were getting preached or were getting treated. But, but let me tell you something. You don't put a man in there just because he treats you good. I, I'll shout you in a couple of weeks. Just come on now. We're trying to get some deacons. And, and, and if, if any one of the men that come before you and you have an ounce of problems with them, make it known. Make it known. Don't sit and go on the parking lot and talk about it. We're going to have them. We're going to have them out on a Wednesday night. We have we gonna we gonna teach this on a Wednesday. Have, have, now I'm we ain't coming up here with your personal opinion, you know, because some people ain't gonna like you just cause cause just cause who you are, you know. They don't, they don't like me. I ain't never did. Nothing. Don't even really know me. What's my middle name? Don't have a clue. Don't even know me. Just don't like me cause I'm cool. Just me. That don't disqualify me for being a deacon because I'm cool. But some people won't like me, Jackie. Just I hadn't done nothing to them. Hadn't done nothing but tried to love them. But they just got, they won't like me because I got a pretty wife. Nobody tell you to go marry her. That's your problem. Shoot. 
she ain't did nothing to you. I ain't did nothing to you. So, so now you're going to be looking up all kind of things. Uh, Brother Glenn, I don't think you ought to be a deacon because you jaywalked. We're not entertaining that kind of foolishness. But if you know something that's spiritually wrong with a brother, we're going to get him. We're going to get you. you don't, we, we don't want no, if you ain't man or woman enough to sign it, we don't want to know, we don't want to know nothing about it. Put your name on it. Put your name on it. Brother Glenn, I'm worried about Brother Robert Melton. I, I saw him fighting. That's legitimate. We need to call him to the carpet. Rob, you got an attitude problem? Beloved, this is what's going to strengthen the church. I'm telling you. Selecting men that you think that's going to be yes men. And, 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 and you guys will never believe it. And this is the way it's supposed to be. Z, Robin, and I, a lot of things we don't agree on. But that ain't your problem. That's our problem. We straighten it out in that office, and when we come out in that, let me just, I'm going to just let you in on something. Say, just say, for instance, uh, 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 I felt that we should have a, a, a revival. They say, well, Glenn, I just think that financially it's not a good time. You know, I think, I think we should. They think we don't. We we'll agree, and whatever we agree on as a team, that's how we walk out of that office. And I don't be saying, see, I told you we should have. I told you we could have. I told you. That ain't how it go. Because what goes on back there stays on back there. Are you hearing me? Let me, let, let me, let me do this, y'all. And I'm, ooh, man. You got two more weeks of this, y'all. Watch this. Let me, let me give you this. Let me give you this. He said, now, I want you to go and find men of honest report. Let me, I just, have to, I just have to teach a little bit on this. See the phrase honest report? That means somebody who experienced something. Watch this. It speaks of a man who by his own testimony and lifestyle has earned the love and respect of this church. It refers to a man who is saved and is living a Christian life. Beloved, he's not perfect. I told him this morning, they mouth dropped this wide. I made some mistakes. I made some last week. I'll make another one before the day gone. You can't find angels. If we were gonna find angels, wouldn't we wouldn't have no deacon, no elder, no preacher, no nothing. Because my Bible say all have sinned. But you don't want nobody that's practicing sin. Walling in sin. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? The word serving tales, and I, I, I just have to tell you this. Whenever you get home, and I like you scholars, and, and go ahead and email me. The word serving tables is the same Greek word for deacon. The same Greek word for deacon. It means to wait tables. That's what a deacon is. Somebody that waits tables. It, it, it was a word that carried the idea that you was working so hard you were kicking up dust. Beloved, how can you kick dust and you're not even here? We looking for men who are willing to roll up their sleeves, who are already working as a deacon. Somebody you don't have to beg to do anything. Somebody who will work this church to, to, because it's what they love to do. I'm trying to tell you. And somebody who's willing to serve her as well as her. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I wish I had them all here, but I'm gonna, we're gonna bring them before you. Let me, tell you, let me just give you some of our process. I want you to know we're serious about this. First time we ever did, we know more now than we ever know before. Each one of the men that we felt 
at this point, and there's so many that's coming on that's going to be, that we feel that, because the more we grow, the more leadership we're going to need. So, so if, if, if you're not in this crop, don't give up, man. Just start working. If this is what you want to do, just get, just get in there and work. Just work. And let me tell you something. If you don't agree with something, don't tear it up. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. It's got to be a desire. Thank you, man. Thank you. I just, uh, it's got to be a desire. It's got to be a want. Man, if me and you don't see things eye to eye, mm-hmm. and, and that don't mean you get angry. If your job, if, if, if one of your assignments mm-hmm. is to sit here and read, mm-hmm. and I don't read the chapter you want me to read, or I want you to read, then you're going to quit. Mm-hmm. Don't need no men like that. Mm-hmm. Don't need no men like that. We want men that you can come and talk to. Hey, man, I got a problem. Somebody that will listen. Beloved, this is serious. Most serious than I ever knew in my life. I didn't know what I was doing at first. I didn't grow up under a preacher. I didn't have a quote, quote, father in the gospel. And I told, and and you know what? Z and Robert and I was talking. They never really worked under the eldership either. They never just had elders that they worked. And then, well, Z had a little more experience than, than Robert and I, but he didn't have no relationship with them. You know what I told, you know what the Lord laid on my heart to tell him? Maybe it's best because you didn't pick up their bad habits. Some of these elders around here are nothing but dictators. They just want to sit back and shot call. And they don't want to work. They don't want to roll. They don't want to do nothing. They want to look and tell you what to do. I want a man that leads by example. I want a man that love it. We were at a preacher's meeting and, and one of the elders was trying to belittle preachers. Broke my heart. And I'm not going to tell you who it is. You just might know the old arrogant fella anyway. But that was a round of uh, preachers standing there and the joker going to look at his little preacher was standing out there and he says, I'm not a preacher lover. Now this is an elder. I'm not a preacher lover. You know, and, and, and I looked and I thought, here's a little preacher was going to say something, because if Zia Rama would have said something like that, it would have been some smoke up in there. <laughs> I done give my life up for this, and you talking about you ain't no preacher lover? And you know what? Because his preacher didn't say nothing. I said, but you know what, sir? I'm an elder lover. Because if you're willing to give up your life for the church, I love a man like you. And you ought to love an elder or a deacon or a preacher, somebody who's willing to put their family on hold. You don't have to be smart and say, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, that's some of the attitudes here. These men have given up their own right for the rights of this church. And you need to work with them. We'll find, you'll see that these men, if I had time with this text, them, them, them with us work with those men. They wasn't hurt. When they straightened that thing out, that you, we don't find no, no, no reference where they had to go back and straighten that problem out because the membership worked with the leadership. Amen. And we need members that are willing to work with the leadership. You've been a great audience. I'm, we just got two more weeks, I'm telling you, that, because we want to know the real way. We want to know, I want you to know, we're going to talk about the qualifications of them. We're going, and then we, I want you to know what they, what they need. To, and let me tell you this, start looking it up now. Because some of us think blameless means that, that he don't have no marks against him. That's not what that means. I don't know what kind of, de- even Webster don't describe it like that. Blameless means that you can't bring an accusation against him that'll stand. In other words, in other words, if you say I'm a womanizer, mm-hmm. you say it all you want to as long as those acquisitions that you bring against me don't stand. Look it up. Look it up. I know what I'm finna go through with because I done did it before. Because some of us are opposed to us looking for reasons to have leadership. We're looking for a reason not to have leadership. We just look at you know. Got your magnifying glass, looking, okay. <laughs> don't ask me something you don't want me to ask you. But I was telling you the process. Our men has been, 
have questionnaires, that's training classes, because we're not going we're not gonna make some of the mistakes we made the first time. The, 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 the leadership classes is open to all men who are interested in being a leader. Let me tell you this. Here's a, here's a good point. Get this, and I promise you I'm through. If, 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 if you had a desire to be a leader and you wasn't picked, and because you wasn't picked, you won't come to the leadership classes, that shows me that you wasn't a deacon anyhow. One of the questions on the questionnaire is, what will happen if you're not chose to be a deacon? I will tell you, one brother say, I'm going to work just as hard anyhow. Those are the kind of men that we're looking for. Stand to your feet. I'm done. I, I, I promise you, I'm going to give you some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I'm going to give it to you. But my desire, y'all, is not to, to make you think that I'm a good preacher. I want to teach you. I want us to be an educated church. I want us to be forewarned about what's going on. But maybe somebody now is going through some things in their life. Maybe, maybe, maybe you, you know it's time for you to be a child of God. Can I tell you, God only designed one way to get into his body. You can't do it like you choose. God says, if you want to be a part of my body, you've got to hear the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. You have to believe it with all of your heart. You have to repent of your sin. In other words, you just can't live any kind of way. You got to repent of that. Lord, I'm sorry. And then you got to con confess the sweetest name on mortal tongue. You have to say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then you have to go down in the water, the grave of baptism, an old creature, and come up a new creature in Christ Jesus. And then you have to live faithful unto death. Beloveds, maybe you're just looking for a church who teach the Bible. You've been affiliated with this church a long time, but you know that church, but you're not growing. Maybe you want to join hands.